Africa, a land ruled by predators, majestic lions, stealthy leopards, relentless hyenas. But pause for a second. Look closely and you'll notice something missing. Where are the bears? Imagine introducing a bear specially built to thrive in Africa today. A powerful omnivore, perfectly adapted to live alongside lions and hyenas without throwing nature out of balance. What would this bear look like? Africa did have bears in the past, and knowing their history sets the stage for our modern design. The Atlas bear, Ursus arctus crowtheri, was the last bear standing in Africa in historical times. It roamed the forests and mountains of North Africa, from Morocco to Libya, until the late 19th century when it was wiped out by overhunting. This brown-black bear was actually a relative of the Eurasian brown bear, about the same size as its European cousins. Unfortunately, centuries of being hunted for sport and even dragged into Roman arenas sealed its fate. The last Atlas bear is thought to have been killed around 1870, ending the legacy of modern bears on the continent. Long before the Atlas bear, however, Africa hosted an even more impressive Ursine titan. Enter Agriotherium africanum, a prehistoric bear that lived millions of years ago. Fossils tell us this beast measured up to 2 meters in length and may have weighed as much as 750 kilograms, putting it among the largest carnivorous mammals of its time. It had wide, powerful jaws, capable of an enormous bite force, one of the strongest bite forces ever inferred for any bear. How did a slow, bulky bear survive among Africa's Miocene mega-predators? By being smart and opportunistic. Paleontologists believe Agriotherium specialized in a mix of grazing on grasses, gobbling fruits, and intimidating other predators to scare them off their kills. Living alongside saber-toothed cats, it had to hold its ground, but around 2.5 million years ago, it vanished, leaving Africa without a bear for ages to come. Understanding these two bears, the Atlas bear and Agriotherium, gives us clues about what works and what doesn't for a bear in Africa. So what would our hypothetical African bear look like? To thrive in the diverse and sometimes harsh African environments, it needs the right gear and build. First off, size. We'd give it a robust frame, but not outright colossal. Think of a bear somewhat akin to a large Eurasian brown bear or an American grizzly. That means when standing on all fours, it might be a bit over a meter at the shoulder, and when it stands up on hind legs, easily 1.8 to 2 meters tall. In weight, we're talking in the range of 300 to 400 kilos for a big male, roughly 660 to 880 pounds. This size makes it heavyweight enough that a lion pride would hesitate to mess with it, yet not so huge that it can't find enough food to eat. A thick, powerful neck and shoulder hump would give it the strength to dig and to wrestle carcasses from other carnivores. Its paws would be armed with long, curved claws, not only handy for digging up roots and tearing open termite mounds, but also formidably effective as weapons. One swipe from a bear's paw can break a skull or snap a spine. Our African bear's clawed forepaw would be the equal of any lion's bite in lethality. And those legendary jaws? We'd borrow a page from Agriotherium's playbook and equip this bear with a strong, broad muzzle and powerful bite. It wouldn't quite have the extremely short snout of its prehistoric cousin, but it would be built to crush. With its teeth and jaw muscles, it could crack open bones for marrow the way hyenas do and crunch tough nuts or fibrous plants when needed a true generalist's dentition. Crucially, our African bear would need to handle heat in ways its polar and grizzly cousins don't. Imagine it with a shorter, thinner coat of fur, a sleek but rough hide, perhaps a dusty brown or reddish brown that blends into savanna grass and desert rocks. A lighter coloration, like the sandy tone of bears from the Middle East, would reflect intense sun better than jet black fur. We might even give it slightly larger ears than a typical brown bear to help radiate heat. Many African mammals, from elephants to fennec foxes, use ear size as a cooling mechanism. When midday temperatures soar, this bear shouldn't overheat easily. Its feet might be tough and partially hairless on the soles, adapting to hot ground. And while it's a heavyweight, it would have a relatively leaner build in summer months, not carrying an overabundance of fat 
except when it needs to survive a drought or a lean season. In essence, picture a grizzly bear that spent some time hitting the gym and then vacationing in the Sahel. Muscular, toned, with a sun-bleached coat and a resilience to high temperatures. Despite its bulk, agility would be part of its package. Our bear could run in short bursts up to around 40 to 50 kilometers per hour when it needs to charge or chase. Not as fast as a cheetah or even a lion, but quick enough that most prey or rivals wouldn't want to be caught. Climbing ability might be moderate, perhaps like a young brown bear. It could scramble up a sturdy tree if absolutely necessary, which could be useful for raiding honey from bees' nests or escaping a marauding elephant. And let's not forget one of the bear's greatest assets, its nose. The perfect African bear would have an olfactory sense on par with the best of its kind. In real life, bears are famous super sniffers. A black bear's sense of smell is about seven times stronger than a bloodhound's. That means our bear can detect carcasses or ripe fruit from miles away, literally sniffing out opportunities on the wind. Large nasal cavities and a moisture-rich snout would help it pick up the faintest sense of water or food in the dry air. This hypersensitive nose, combined with keen hearing, would often alert the bear to chances and dangers long before its small eyes ever see them. Where would our African bear actually live? Africa is a big place with a mosaic of habitats, from lush rainforests to arid deserts, high mountains to savannas. To give our bear the best chance of long-term survival, we'd likely place it in a habitat that offers both abundant food and cover from the elements. One promising setting is the savanna woodlands or savanna grassland mosaic. Think of regions like East Africa or Southern Africa, where open grasslands are interspersed with patches of acacia trees, riverine forests and rocky outcrops. Here, the bear would have space to roam and plenty to eat, but also access to shade and hiding spots. Areas near waterholes or rivers would be especially attractive, not only for drinking and cooling off, but because those are wildlife hubs where the bear can find carcasses and lush vegetation in the dry season. Could it survive in the desert or semi-desert? Possibly at the fringes. Our bear might patrol the edges of the Sahara or Namib if it has adaptations like the ability to go without water for a while and eat desert plants. But the lack of cover and scarcity of food make true deserts tough even for native species, so our bear would prefer better environments. What about tropical rainforests or jungles? Bears like sun bears and Asian black bears do fine in forests, but Africa's equatorial forests, like the Congo, already have heavy competition and a bear might struggle with humidity and dense undergrowth given its size. High mountains and forests, like the Ethiopian highlands or Atlas Mountains, could be a refuge. Cooler temperatures and fewer large competitors but also less abundant prey. Surviving the African heat means our bear would adjust its daily rhythm. Likely, it becomes crepuscular and nocturnal when needed. At night, a different Africa awakens, and our bear would be in its element. Under the cover of darkness, it can trot long distances, invisible except when caught in a moonbeam. Its sensitive nose and ears guide it to food. What does the perfect African bear eat? In one word, everything. A diet with variety ensures that even if one food source dwindles, the bear can switch to another. A crucial trait for long-term survival without wrecking the prey balance. In the wet season, our bear becomes a giant gardener, feasting on figs, acacia pods, berries and nuts. It stands on hind legs to grab fruit or digs up roots and tubers like a warthog. Using its claws, it tears into termite mounds and logs for protein-rich insects, much like a sloth bear slurping up ants. And of course, honey. This bear would love honey if it can get it. In Africa, there's a symbiotic relationship between the honey guide bird and humans, or honey badgers. The bird leads humans to beehives to get at the wax after the honey is taken. One can imagine our bear following an excited chattering honey guide to a bee's nest in a hollow tree. A few swipes, a bit of smoke, and it's faced first in a dripping honeycomb, ignoring bee stings thanks to thick fur. Now, all those vegetarian options are great, but our bear is also a meat-eater when it can be. 
However, it's not the savannah's next super predator in the way a lion or leopard is. Chasing fleet-footed antelope through open grassland in broad daylight isn't really a bear's style. That would burn too many calories and invite injury. Instead, this bear would often choose the path of least resistance for protein. Scavenging Why hunt when you can let someone else do the hunting for you? If a pride of lions takes down a zebra or a cheetah fells a gazelle, the bear just needs to sniff it out and show up at the dinner table. Its towering presence and ferocious reputation might be enough to send smaller predators packing. Lions would probably hate this. First hyenas steal their food, now a bear shows up. Seriously? Indeed, our bear's diet might mirror that of a hyena or a jackal in many ways, with the added advantage that it can also subsist on plants. If a severe drought causes prey numbers to crash and carnivores to starve, the bear can stay alive on berries, roots, or insects until prey rebounds. Does it ever hunt live prey? Yes, when the opportunity arises. Our bear might not be a stealth specialist, but it's still a powerful carnivore. If it catches a vulnerable animal off guard, it will seize the chance. Perhaps it surprises an impala fawn hiding in the brush, or ambushes a warthog that's too slow dashing into its burrow. It could even charge into a flock of flamingos by a lake, grabbing a few in the commotion. Fish could be on the menu too. Picture it sitting by a riverside, scooping catfish or tilapia out of the shallows with a quick swipe. In some areas, crocodiles might learn to fear a bear's approach, as it could scavenge croc kills, or even dare to snatch a smaller croc if feeling bold. Risky, but bears can be daring when hungry. Now that we've conjured this awesome African bear into existence, at least in our minds, let's hear from you. What would you name this bear? The Savannah Grizzly, or perhaps something local and epic sounding? Be creative. This is a one-of-a-kind species after all deserving of a memorable name that pays homage to its African home and bear lineage. And what do you think of its characteristics? Did we get it right, or would you design it differently? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.